The Kotnika treasure consists of 44 gold objects dated to the Stone Copper Age. It was discovered during the survey of the settlement mound of the same name in 1956 and 1957. In 1956 and 1957, the then Veliko Tarnovo Regional National Museum conducted archaeological excavations of the settlement mound near the village of Hotnitsa, under the guidance of archaeologist Nikola Angolov. Six buildings dating to the end of the Stone Copper Age were discovered during the survey. The settlement perished in a fire. And in one of the dwellings the remains of five badly burned human skeletons were found, one of which has a copper axe next to his head. Of particular interest is building number four, which is almost square in shape, which differs from all the others in the settlement, which are rectangular, and is located in the very center of the mound. Its entrance is from the south, and the building is divided into two rooms, the northern one being the larger of the two. The building lacks features characteristic of the dwellings of this era, such as a hearth, a chromal, hand mill made of two stones, and household pottery. Traces of red paint can be found on some of the remains on the outside of the walls. All this leads the researcher to think that the building was not intended for habitation and most likely had a cult purpose. Immediately next to the northern wall of the northern room of the aforementioned building number 4, 44 gold objects were found in a heap. Four round convex plates with a large hole in the middle and small holes intended for hanging, 39 gold rings and one spiral. The total weight of the treasure is 312 grams. The chemical composition of the metal is 92% gold and 7.5% silver. The purity of the gold is 21 to 22 carats, which roughly corresponds to the composition of the gold-bearing sands in Bulgaria. The circular perforated plates, also known as idols, are approximately the same thickness, 0.5 millimeters which probably means they are made from a single sheet of gold. They have a polished front surface and a matte interior. The gold rings form three groups according to their length, which suggests a form of standardization. They have the following lengths. I. From 7.7 .7 to 9.1 centimeters. 14 pieces. 2, from 11.6 to 13.6 cm, 11 pieces. 3, from 14 to 16 cm, 15 pieces, and their thickness is between 1.5 and 2 mm. Some of the rings were found attached to each other in twos and fours. The golden spiral is the heaviest object of the group, 44 years. It is twisted two and a half times, the body thickness is 3.5 mm. In 2000, the excavations of the settlement mound were renewed under the leadership of archaeologist Stefan Chohagiev. In the next few seasons, Five more gold objects were discovered. Three round idols. Similar to those found by Angolov and those from the Varna Chalcolithic necropolis, and two spirals. The second of these, dated to the early stages of the late Chalcolithic. 
can be considered one of the earliest gold objects worldwide. And the depth at which it was discovered suggests that this spiral is older than that and can be considered the oldest gold on Earth. This is also evident in the technique of making the spiral. In the case of the objects discovered during the previous excavations and in Hochnitsa and in the Varna Chalcolithic Necropolis. The manufacturing technique was by drawing and in the latter by hammering the metal 23.5 carats of pure natural gold. Stone axes, needles for sewing skins, ritual bowls and figures of the mother goddess are among the objects found in the area of the village of Hotnitsa. Or as the discoverer of the oldest gold in the world from the settlement mound near the village of Hotnitsa in Veliko Tarnovo. Association. Chokardziev says, 7,000 years ago, people traveled a lot and did not know stress. In Hotnitsa, for the first time, gold was found in its true environment and not in graves and necropolises. People lived and the ornaments were on them and they used them in everyday life. Nikola Angelov is the archaeology WHO found the HOTNISH Golden Treasure in 1957. The excavations he made are regular and one of the first in Bulgaria using modern methodology. The fact that the find is not accidental makes it even more interesting for archaeologists. A year before Nikola Angelov made this remarkable discovery, the mound in question turned out to be part of a cultivated field. The people who worked there with agricultural machinery noticed that many clay vessels were coming out of the ground and handed them over to the district museum in Veliko Tarnovo. This is how the studies began in 1956, says Alexander Chokardziev. Nikola Angelov's task was to excavate the surface layer and when he started to work. He came across the remains of 20 dwellings from the late Chalcolithic, Stone Copper Age, approximately 4,200-4100 BC. This is the time just before the Thracians settled on our lands. For several years, Nikola Angelov was able to study practically the entire village and establish the end of the life of this mound. The archaeologist came across unburied skeletons, presumably killed in this latest attack. And it was so sudden and destructive that people could not hide. However, the attack was not aimed at looting because the remains that the earth has hidden are great. There came out incredible objects, unique to the world in general, copper knives. Nikola Angelov recorded the place where he found the gold as building number four. The archaeologist persistently insisted that this was not a dwelling. And he was right. Building number four is a mystery. It is in the middle of the settlement and is the only building with a square shape 4.5 by 4.5 meters. The apartments are rectangular in shape and usually 6 by 8 meters in size, explains Alexander Chokardziev. And he adds that in the building where the property was hidden. His colleague did not find either a furnace or a chromal for manually grinding grain. Therefore, it is quite possible that we are talking about a cult building or a temple. However, 
This is also one of the reasons why Sasho Chokardze F does not strongly agree with Nikola Angelov's thesis that the gold objects are parts of a necklace. They may have been part of a garment that was used in some kind of ritual activity. It is strange, even more so, that the building itself, apart from being completely different from the others, is unique in itself. The separate room has a separate internal space. The building is divided into a northern and a southern part. And the treasure was found in the northern part, the archaeologist said. In the four plates, one sees a human face because the holes are shaped to create the illusion of a face. But Alexander Chokardzieff admits that no matter how much he stares, he does not see a face. You know, what's more interesting is that these four plates are the same thickness. They were probably made from a single sheet. And probably their shape was very important. Because we have come across the same objects, but made of clay. That's why I think it's not just about a piece of jewelry, but about elements of a complex related to ritual activity, adds the archaeologist. Can we date the treasure correctly? On the issue of dating, Alexander Chokardzieff makes a small digression. And he explains that before he started working in Hotnitsa, Nikola Angelov studied a settlement mound in Rus together with Professor Georgi Georgiev. The professor appears in this story because he is the author of the Karanov periodization system, which is still used by archaeologists around the world to date prehistoric times. In prehistory, each discovery bears the name of the nearest modern settlement. It is the same with Hotnishkoto. Professor Georgiev studied a mound in Karanovo near Nova Zagora. There he distinguishes seven strata from the three epochs in prehistory. Until now, every archaeologist who hears, for example, Karanovo I and II, knows that it is an early Neolithic. The professor published his chronological system in 1959, which is still valid, albeit with some corrections based on new discoveries. Perhaps a year before the professor made his periodization known to the whole world, Nikola Angelov published his discovery and dated the Hotnish gold according to Professor Georgiev's system. According to this periodization, the Hotnish gold hoard is from the Karanovo Vi stage or approximately 4300-4100 B.C. There is no foolproof dating method. And the gold can't be dated either. So we use the charcoal remains that we found along it and decide that the gold is from that time as well. Moreover, until recently we were working with the widespread radiocarbon method. And now there is a newer methodology that pulls all the dates back about 200 years. The method is known as AMS, Accelerator Mass Spectrometry. But we still don't know which one is more accurate, says Alexander Chokardzieff. And he clarifies that if everything around the treasure is approximately 4,200 years old, the gold is only that old by presumption. But the objects may be at least 100 or 200 years older because they may have been passed down from generation to generation. That's why he doesn't like arguing about which gold is older. The one in Hotnitsa or the one in Varna.
I'm not a fan of local chauvinism because I'm fair to science. The truth is that whatever objects we found in Hotnitsa are also in Varna. The two evils fought at the same time for approximately 300-400 AD. The context in which they are found is different. The building in which the Hotnish treasure was housed is older than the graves in Varna. But who can say exactly how old the objects are? Alexander Chokardziev shrugs and adds that for him it is more important that they come from Bulgaria these two examples of earliest gold processing in human history. And he admits that he sincerely regrets that the Hotnish treasure just wasn't lucky enough to get good PR. It was found in the years when Bulgaria was closed to the rest of the world. And it did not receive a wide international response. Unlike the treasures in the Varna necropolis, which immediately after their discovery became an international sensation. The other thing he laments is that the original is not with us. It is preserved in the National History Museum, and tourists can see a copy in the Tarnovo Archaeological Museum.